bugs are horrible out here. Say hi, honey. Hey guys, Gonzo here with uh, part two of uh, story time with Gonzo. Um, it's Friday, July 12th. I got some questions to answer. I'll finish the video on Thursday. But first of all, my first question was, um, being living in Michigan, have I ever made it to the Great Lakes? Absolutely. There's five Great Lakes. You got Superior, Michigan, Huron, Ontario, and Erie. I've made it to three of them. Superior, I've made it to Lake Michigan, and I've made it to Lake Huron. Today we're at beautiful, beautiful Lake Superior. The question was Christian Sullivan. I'm not sure where Christian lives, but uh, I figured since I was coming out to the beach today with my beautiful wife, uh, I'd answer the question personally for you, Christian, right at the beach here. So uh, I hope that answers your question and um, keep them coming. Can I get a shot of the lake, honey? Alrighty, fellas. I'll answer the rest of the questions Thursday, and uh, in the meantime, I'm going to try and get a, another video loaded. I'm going to try and do some fishing this week, so that should be a good video. Talk to you later. Peace out. Hey guys, Gonzo here, back again with another little episode of Story Time. It might start a little messed up here, but just uh, just bear with me. And we'll get this thing started. All right, fellas, here we are. Uh, story time with Gonzo, part two. Um, it's going to start a little messed up. You'll see at the beginning. I'm not good with editing, editing anything. I don't know how to. So um, I've got 14 questions this week. So we'll get started. And if I have any time, I'll try to tell you one little thing about myself. Uh, Christian Sullivan. He wants to know, have I ever been to the Great Lakes? Well, I'm gonna answer that towards then. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see the video that I did on the forum. And then I got the Great Lakes Outdoors 91. How did I begin, how did I begin trapping? Um, I just made VR a couple weeks ago, a video response to another one, but uh, I'll shorten everything up. Uh, when I was five, six, seven years old, I used to wait at home just to hear my grandpa's truck pull in the driveway and watch what animals he'd grab out of the back of his truck and bring into this, his uh, woodshed. You know, and I'd get my boots on and I'd run out there and help him and stuff. So um, I was always interested in outdoors. I started small like that, so I'd have to thank my grandpa for that. Uh, that was really a, that was a special moment, you know, um, every time that I heard the truck pull in. So thanks to my grandpa, that's how I got in the trap. And, um, survive Without, what are some of my favorite YouTube channels? Well, I'm subscribed to about 560 channels, so I'd say probably all 560 of them, plus a lot of other ones. There's so many good channels out there. Uh, if you watch some of my videos, you'll see this in there, like I put it in at the beginning. Some of the, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but those are a lot of the channels that I, uh, I subscribe to, and they watch my videos and comment on them. And everybody that watches my videos and comments on them, I make sure I watch your videos and comment on them too. And uh, there's other channels, you know, I'm subscribed to a couple uh, drinking channels, and subscribed to some joke channels and stuff uh, that I really enjoy uh, watching. I get some good laughs out of them and stuff. So there's a lot of good channels out there. Um, Survive Without, uh, I, I've got a lot of, different uh, plants in my yard that watching your videos I mean it just you got a great channel too you know that I, I never knew what they were I just thought that's a weed or that's a plant well now I know what the names of them are and stuff so but thank you for the question backyard meat what's my best hunting memory um, I've got many of them every time I, I harvest an animal or something I mean it's, uh, it's there's always a memory there and stuff but uh, probably one that uh, most sticks in my head is back when I was in college, I was 19, 20 years old. I didn't have a lot of time to hunt. So I was going to college full time and then I'm trying to drive back to my house, which was 30 miles away. And then get out to my deer stand, which was another five, six miles from my house. Well, opening day of deer season, I figured I'd bunch school. I went hunting. Um, 
and I had a five pointer come in. And that's the biggest buck that I've ever shot to this day. I've seen some bigger ones, but I've never had the chance, the opportunity to kill them. One time I did, but I, it was just, I, I messed up myself. Nice eight pointer. But uh, anyways, this five pointer comes walking in, and back uh, when I was like 18, 19, 20, they started allowing two licenses in Michigan. And uh, I was at my stand, a five pointer come walking in with a spike horn. Well, the five pointer started eating, and then I thought, I'm going to try to get two for the price of one here. You know, the spike horn coming on the trail behind him, and uh, he had walked on the back side of the five pointer, and I just waited for the right time. I pulled the trigger, I double lunged both of those deer, and uh, neither one of them went more than 30, 40 yards. They both dropped. I went and got my brother. Well, not my brother in law, it's my sister's boyfriend. And he asked what I got. I said, I, I got two of them laying there. He goes, Well, I only heard one shot. And I told him, I said, That's because I'm good. But maybe I'm cheap. Maybe I didn't want to use two shells or something. So my deer season was over in the first two hours of deer season back in 19, probably 92. And then I got to go back to college and stuff. But So th that was probably it. I shot two deer with one shell. I mean, I know a lot of people have did that with bow and arrow, with rifle or something, but that's the one that really sticks in my head and I, I enjoy telling that story sometimes. Great question, thank you. Fisherman Guy 44, what's the biggest raccoon I've ever caught? I would have to say in the mid 30s. Uh, I've caught a lot of them, you know, in the upper 20s, mid 20s, but I, I've caught a few real dandies that, that, are, that were big. And have I ever ate raccoon? No, because uh, looking at some of them that I've caught in traps with all the lice and fleas on them, yeah, it's just... I'm going to try muskrat this year, though, guys. I'm going to make a video on it. It should be pretty pretty neat. And then have I ever made a raccoon hat? No. Um, but back uh, I, back in the Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone days, when I was a kid growing up, my mom had bought me a raccoon hat, and I wore it everywhere. You know, everybody called me Daniel Boone, so... I, I probably still have that hat in one of my totes around here. Kronkus 36, what year did I graduate? Um, you're probably a couple years older than me, both, so I'll tell you, 1990. I'm 41, I'll be 42 this November 18th. That's my birthday, I'm a deer season kid. Georgia Hunter 22, how many traps do I have? Um, I didn't count them all because I've got them in totes over here and I've got totes over there and I've got a bunch hanging up back here and, and some boxes. I'm going to estimate that I've probably got around 240 traps. Um, I want to get myself, I just bought this spring a dozen 220s. I'm going to get myself another half dozen 330s. And that should be good for con bears for me because I, uh, I'll get three otters. It'll be easy to get, you know, but just to get some beaver, you know, for some uh, um, bobcat bait and stuff this, this next winter. Um, so I'd say around 240, you know, maybe give or take a few. Uh, Bass Fisherman 143, he wants to know what's my favorite lure brand. Um, I've got a few of them. I mean, I, I really enjoy using MEPS for trout and Panther Martin for trout. And then when I'm fishing bass and walleyes and stuff, I really enjoy using Rapala. And I've got Rapala flay knives, I've got Rapala um, other stuff I can see up on my board and in my tackle box. So Rapala is probably one of my favorite baits of all times, you know. ADK Trapper, am I into hunting as much as I'm into trapping and fishing? Absolutely. Um, when summertime gets here, I start preparing for bear season every year. If you watch some of my previous videos, I got two big barrels of bear bait over there. I've got a barrel of bear bait over here. Um, I can't wait to get out. You know, once uh, bear bait season starts uh, August 10th, I, I'm in the woods. I mean, I'm in the woods all the time right now, but uh, I, I hunt hard. You know, we go from bear hunting. Um, into grouse hunting, do some duck and goose hunting with my son. Uh, and then um, trapping season gets here. And I've always got a gun with me normally, you know, and I'll shoot some grouse and stuff. But then I, I, I take the time to bait my deer and stuff too. And then when deer season's here, um, I get most of my traps over the woods. I still do a little bit of trapping because there's so many guys out there and stuff that I don't need anybody uh, stealing my traps or taking my animals. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm into deer hunting hard. I, I enjoy it. Bear hunting, grouse hunting, everything. So I hunt just as hard as I trap and fish. Good question. Um, 
the outdoorsman 1515 asked me, what's my favorite gun? Um, I've got nine of them. I would probably have to say my 300 Winchester Magnum. Um, I bought that a few years back in case I went out west for elk hunting, which I've never been out there yet. But uh, I've got that. I, that's my deer gun, my rifle. Um, I got a Remington 870. It's a three inch. Um, I use that for my ducks, my geese, my uh, grouse. I bought my kid a three and a half inch. Uh, that's what he uses. Um, if he doesn't take that, I, I take his shotgun sometimes too. Uh, I, I enjoy my 12 gauge, my 870 Remington for uh, for rabbit hunting too. I just I, I use a smaller load. I use a seven and a half shot for that then. But um, I, I've got a few of them. You know, I got my 870 Remington or I got my 300 Winchester Magnum. Those are the two guns that I use the most. So I've got two of them, not one. Fishing the Great Lakes. Have I ever caught a sturgeon? Um, no, I, I've never caught a sturgeon. I've ever never actually seen a sturgeon. You know, I fished them all through the Prescott River quite a bit, and I, I know that they've been up in there, and other people have seen them, but I I've, I've never been lucky enough to see one or catch one up in there. So, and you want to know if I could get my fingernail removed, where I got caught in the grinder there? Um, I can because where this part they call the claw um, sticks out. That. Uh, that's my, it made my fingernail split. I suppose they could go in there and remove my fingernail and it would grow back the same way. That's what the doctor told me was gonna happen. And he was absolutely right. So no, I, I can't get that part of the fingernail removed. Um, Nick 14's up. If I was ever in the Duluth area, would I ever go tip up fishing with you? I tell you what, if we got, uh, if we got ice next December, when you guys are on Christmas break and stuff, you get a hold of me, if I'm off of work, uh, I'll grab my son Colin and we'll go up there and spend a day with you in uh, the Northland and you know if you want to bring a few other buddies or something I'll buy a three-day license and we'll spend a day out on the lake and uh, make a few videos and stuff. Um, you can show me the way you do it and stuff so uh, I, I'd appreciate that Nick, that'd be really good. Pigger pool, what's my favorite fish to fish for? I've got two of them. In the springtime before uh, everything else opens up, I really enjoy trout fishing. I'm on the river steady, and then once bass and walleye and pike open up, then I get out to the lakes a little bit more, but I still go back to the river and stuff. So I would have to say uh, I've got two favorite fish, and that would be pike and then trout. I, I love fishing walleyes too, but uh, pike are just, just the fight and stuff that they put up. I mean, you, you get a 30, 40 inch pike on, and I haven't caught many. I've only caught one that's 39 and a half, but I've caught lots of pike in the 34 to 36 area and stuff, and I just I just love fishing for them. And then uh, Pigger Pooh wants to know, what is my go-to lure for pike? Um, I really don't have a go-to lure. Uh, I'm a minnow man. I love trapping minnows, or else I love just catching them out of the river. I mean, before I go pike fishing or musky fishing, I'll stop at the big Prescott River by Marinesco, and the bigger chubs that I can get, the better. I mean, I'll, I'll have seven, eight, nine inch chubs, I hook them right through the bottom of the head here, it comes out the top with these big hooks that I got. And my middle's dead. I put a split shot up 18 inches. I throw it out there as far as I can, let it sink three, four seconds. And I just start jigging it in real hard. And it looks like a wounded minnow going everywhere. And I tell you what, I've caught some big, big bass on these big minnows. You know, you think that bass wouldn't grab something like that? These minnows look like a wounded, they're wounded. There's lots of other fish and minnows down there. And the fish feed on them, but when they see a wounded one, they know it's easy prey, and that's why they go get it. So uh, catch yourself some big minnows and go out there and try that. I tell you what, you won't re you won't regret it. regret it. Um, Hunter Crook, what's my most memorable trapping catch? Ah, uh, I would have to say my first bobcat. It took me three years to get one. I've seen plenty of places, uh, tracks in areas that they were chasing rabbits and stuff and uh, I remember the first day I got one. I set a trap one day and it was on an old railroad grade and the next day I was walking in there and we had scattered snow and I seen a small cat trap and I was just hoping like heck when I was walking in there that I would get it and I walked in and there it was. It was a small 19 pound female. Um, I did keep the cat. I've got a friend that I gave it to. He's got a full mount of it over at his house. He lives a couple streets behind me and stuff, but I would have to say that. I mean, I've caught a lot of animals and stuff. I really enjoyed my weasel catch. I, I think about that all the time, too. 
but it will probably have to be my first Bobcat. So uh, that's that. Um, I'll give you one, one quick story with me. Uh, back when I was in college, I bought a tarantula and I brought it home and I had a little aquarium. It was probably 18 inches long and 10 inches wide, maybe 12 inches high. It was a pink toe tarantula. And uh, I showed my mom. She told me, Heath Allen, get that the hell out of this house. That's not staying in here. I paid $35 for the spider. Uh, I'm not giving it away. I'm not bringing it anywhere else. I'll keep it in my room, Mom. So she says it better be up there, and you better never bring it downstairs. Well, all my friends would come over. I'd bring it downstairs, you know, and we'd let it walk on us and stuff. And you could put it on your hand here and blow on it. it next thing you know, it's on your shoulder. Move so quick, it was like you couldn't even see it get up there. Well, it got away a few times. And uh, my sister's boyfriend had it out one day. And when he put the top back on the aquarium, he didn't turn the latches. And it must have crawled up the side and pushed its way out. Well, this time it had been missing for a week and a half. We searched the house up and down, couldn't find it anywhere. And it was uh, Easter, and my cousin Ryan was laying on the couch. And that spider come, must have crawled up the couch and come crawling right over the top of his feet, right down on him. What an eerie feeling that would probably be, knowing that there's a live tarantula loose in the house, and I'm sure he didn't know nothing about it until he's seen it. And all he did is just kind of, there's your spider's on me, your spider's on my feet, and then we just, we grabbed it and put it back in the aquarium. And uh, I named him Mike. And um, I, I thought a couple times that Mike had died, like the first time he was laying on his back. And he'd been there. And then he was laying there for a second day. And a third day I come home from college, well here's my spider over here, and here's a molting right there. I never knew that a tarantula molted their skin. So what he was doing, he was in the process, he was on his back, trying to get out of it or drying out or something and he made a little hole right in the middle there and he got out of there and I could put that molt right next to the spider and if you didn't know the difference you would think that that's uh that that was a live spider too but that's it um I appreciate all the views and comments and everything that we had on the last one and as long as this one goes good too and we get roughly 200 views or something uh, I'll do it another week until um Trapping and hunting comes first, you know, or else if the views start to peter off, we'll, uh, we'll end the story time with Gonzo, but I appreciate all the support. I thank all my viewers, your comments, and uh, questions that you guys got for me, so uh, keep them coming. So until next week, uh, peace. I hope you guys enjoyed the underwater video.